back to Tai Chi Wellness, and this is our Friday broadcast. I'm just going to do the first 17 moves from the Tai Chi set so that you can see what it looks like. And I have a new microphone today, so I'm hoping that this is going to help you hear me a little better. And we're just working on seeing about what we can do with lights, <laughs> so we get a little bit more light. Okay, so for today, I also have hardwired in um, my computer, so I'm hoping that the cutting in and out we had last week uh, will not be happening. So we'll cross our fingers. All right, so the Tai Chi set always begins and ends with a bow. And again, I'm just going to do the first 17 moves just so that you can see what it's going to look like. And I'm going to bring in commencement, which we talked about last week, which is with no effort. And then shifting. We worked on this last week. Into left press towards tail. Hold the ball into grass towards tail. And this is our topic for Today, we're going to play a little bit with this. So just bring that back around. Whip to one side. And bring that out. And we're going to bring that forward into white stork spreads wings. Let that go. Into brush knee left. Strong the pay car. Opening the hands. We have three brush knees. Hopefully I'll be able to keep them within the space here. Move number three, half a step, heel goes out, strum the pay car. If you hold on to that space, I'm just going to back myself up. There's one more brush knee, it's a brush knee left. Go step to hold the flowers, sink, in, out, sink, deflect carry and crunch. Sinking back, two hands, comes back around, and then sink, and let that go, sink again. Okay, so that's the first 17 moves, and what I want to be sharing with you are some of the nuances into those movements for those people that have been doing the Tai Chi set for a while and you want to fine tune your skills. And for those people that have never done it before, I just want to be able to share with you how does the movement go and allow you the opportunity to practice. All right, so last week we started with just really sensing into your feet. Standing on your feet, just feel what they feel like and finding out is your weight equal on both feet? Do you have weight more to one side than another? Because we want everything to be balanced. We also want everything to be equally aware. So as I feel into my feet, I can't really feel my toes being present there, so I do need a little bit more uh, awareness coming into my feet. I do notice there's a little bit of tension in my lower back, Probably my head needs to come up a little bit straighter. Uh, I tend to be forward from looking at that computer, so it needs to come up. But in order to do that, I have a little bit more tension that comes into my back. So that's just my awareness. So as you're standing there, what is your awareness? And then what can you do with that? All right, so if you just hold on to that, you sense for yourself. We're just seeing what we've got. Okay, and I'm just going to change my mic. We're going to try this for a second time. I don't know, it just cut out. 
but I'm going to try to continue on. So um, let's go with what we were just working on, which was the subtleness of movement. So I had just said, sink down into the feet, that opens the lower back, shift your weight into the left foot, so my hip is just doing a slight little release, and the fingers are just going to turn as I turn, so that then it's really free to turn and spiral my whole right leg to turn to the side, shift the weight, and slide that heel around, and reach out. Okay, and that's what we were working on last week. I just wanted to review it because it's important for what's coming next. So commencement, we rise and sink. So now you're going to go into the left foot. Thank you to whomever just joined in. I'm sorry if you had to go searching for me. Turn and sink. Okay. This gets us to left grasp the bird's tail, which is hold the ball. So the palm of the left hand turns to come up, and you're going to hold the ball. Step with your left foot to the corner, and you're going to push out of the right foot into the left foot. Comes through. Okay? So I will do that facing you so you can see. So I would have just turned to put my right hand out. I sink into my right leg, and it allows me to bring my hands around, holding on to a big ball. Step my left foot towards 45 degrees to the corner, and I push out of my right foot and into my left. Okay, let's go back and do that one again. So we were here. Hold. Okay. So I'm going to turn it again facing this other direction. So you repeat the action. But I want you to be able to see how I'm going to expand my back. So I'm going to hold the ball, step, and this is going to push, push, push. It's like doing the wave, it just kind of goes up the body. Okay, so I'm going to turn one more direction. So let me try it facing away. So I'm going to go here. Hold the ball. Step 45. Push out to the right. Spiral into the left. Expand. Okay. So hope you can see those pieces. So I see there's several people watching. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for finding me again. Okay, so the first part, you have a hand that comes out. Okay, it's supported by your scapula, by your shoulder. It comes right from your foot, so that's where the push in the foot goes right out the arm. Okay, and that's going to come around, so this is nice and solid. I'm just, it's just floating, not solid like I'm, I'm holding tension in my hand, but just really gentle and supported, so it has no effort in it, okay? And the other hand is going to come down the palm, it's going to sweep past, and at the end, it does this little spiral action, okay? So if I turn my fingertips out to the side, I could spiral in, and that's the action, okay? So it's not a heavy duty spiral, but that's the action that's in there. So when you see me go like this, my hand comes down and my fingers keep turning inwards towards my body. And then they're gonna turn around for the next part to come back up, okay? So that little action is allowing for that, that spiral piece. Why is that important? All the way through the Tai Chi set, the spiral action is washing bone marrow, is squeezing all the tissue and opening it back up, moving the lymph, moving electrical signals, 
moving the blood, it's taking all that tissue and just kind of wringing it out, just really opening it up and giving you more possibility. So you'll start to notice a lot of changes that happen from that spiral action when it comes through in the, all the pieces. Okay, so let's do from commencement, that's the easiest. So we have sink down into the feet, float and drop. Sink over into that left foot, turn and reach out, spiral the back heel. Hold the ball, step with the left foot to the corner, push out of that right foot, into the left foot, left grasp with tail. My hand is spiraled on the right of the back. Okay, let's go on like this. All right, so now our next part, I'm going to turn so you can see my hand. I'm going to spiral my right hand around, sink, drop. Place all my weight into my left foot, and then I can step straight to the side, and I'm going to be able to bring my hands to face in. Okay? So what does that mean? We were facing this way. Left grasp puts tail. This is my side. And my left, I'm going to the corner on the left. And we found. So then what I'm going to do is sink into my left foot. Place my right foot straight to that side wall, and everything is going to line up to the side wall. The back of my hand, my hips, my foot in front. That's all going to line up. Okay? Let me do it to you facing this way. So we have left grasp with tail. I turn my hand, hold the ball, step your foot straight towards whichever wall you're facing, or the camera to me, okay? And then we're going to turn, square, expand. All right. Now, what I want to do is talk a little bit about the feet, because we were talking before about when you were walking around the room, when you're walking, so there was power coming out of your feet. You're going to start building power by how you're using the floor. This is important. So, as I was turning from the commencement, and I sunk into my right foot, placed the left foot to the corner, and then pushed out of the right foot, right there, the whole foot is connected to the floor. All the five pads of the toes are working, as well as the big ball, little ball, side of the um, foot, and then the heel. All those nine points are all connected to the floor. And you're going to push out of the floor, turn at the top, square the hip, and then your weight is going down into your right, or sorry, your left foot. Your whole foot is connected to the floor again. And you've activated those nine points of the feet down into the floor. Okay, now my next action is my hand would have turned to come up to hold the ball. And all my weight would go into my left foot. Everything is completely planted in that leg. Now when I place my right foot, I'm just going to leave all my weight in the left and just position my foot, placing it down nice and gentle. And I'm going to now shift the weight up and out of the left. The whole foot, I can feel it. Turn, rotate, and sink down into my right foot. 70% of my weight in the front, 30% in the back. So I'm not totally into my right foot yet. So I just have my weight there. Why is that important? There are several pieces that go with this. So in your position, and you're putting your weight down into your foot, you're not going to grip your toes. We talked about that last week. You're just going to have everything nicely, gently placed. There's this little spiral action that goes down into that foot. And then when you go to step and place the other foot, you spiral the opposite way out of your leg and spiral down into the new leg. Now, you're not going to think, oh, I'm going to spiral. It just happens. It happens because that's the way the action works. And so as you turn at the top here, that's part of the spiral. 
the spiral finishes down into the leg. And this is what gives us power when you spiral out of that leg. It's going to go down into the other leg. That's where your power comes from. And what you're going to notice on your feet is your feet start to get stronger. Your balance starts to get stronger. Your ability to gain power out of your feet, it's just stronger because this awareness is woken up because you massage the bottom of the foot back and forth all the way through the set. Really powerful. Okay, so having said that, let's finish Grassford's tail off because we massage back and forth. Okay, so I'm just going to face the side again. So we have done left Grassford's tail here. Turn and hold the ball. Step. And I said to you, you're going to bring your hands up. The fingertips of your left hand, I'm going to put right into the wrist of my right hand, which is going to be turned towards me, and we're going to go in down into the right. We're going to turn the right hand and wipe it past the left. I'll do that again for you, but right now I'm just focus on feet. So we come back into the left foot, push out of that left foot. Go into your right and the palms are going to go together. Push into the right, Pushes you back, push into the left, pushes you forward. Okay, so you can feel that massage coming back and forth through the feet. So let's do that a couple of times. I will go through the arms, but right now let's just get the feet down. Just feel this part, because this is where I would like you to be able to play this week. So you're going to step, fingertip goes to the wrist. Bow and arrow comes back. Now for those people that have been doing this for a while, you're checking in with your toes. Did they lift off the floor? Are you scrunching your toes? Can you feel all nine points? Did you square your hip? Did you allow the whole body movement to happen? Those are the pieces you need to be looking at. Okay, so we've gone back and forth on our feet a couple of times. I'd like you to just walk the room again and notice your walk is doing now. And so for me, there's even more power in my foot without me even thinking about it. And it's just pushing me right forward. And it's like, you know what? I could go get that stuff done right now. That's the kind of, of action instead of where we were talking about, I've got to walk on my feet, but I've got to watch my balance, right? Or I can't push through my foot, the ankle is forgotten how to roll and push off the foot and bring that action through the foot. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the hands for Grassford's tail. I'm going to come in a little bit closer. You can see. So I'm going to take my fingertips and put it into the crease of my wrist. And when my hand goes out, I open it all the way across my shoulders Going up through the top of my head. And this is one long open expansion. Turn the wrist, palms come back, and then you're going to pull them apart. Turn the palms to go towards each other. The right one is going to stay out in front of you facing you, and the left one is going to go up and meet it. When you put the hands together, they're going to look like that. Palms are together and you go pushing out. Okay, let's do that again. So we've got fingertip, turn and pull. Palm to palm, goes out. Open the hands and two hands are going to go out. Okay, so the whole sequence, and you can see by my body, my body just wants to move with the whole thing. It works together as a unit. Okay, so fingertip into the wrist, turn, comes back. Think, palm to palm, open, comes back, sink. 
Two hands go out. Bring it back. And then we would move to the next move. Okay? So you got the massage back and forth in the feet. And then this beautiful flow in the arms back and forth. What are you doing in, as far as the whole body goes with this? You have an expansion. An expansion, contraction, sink. Expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. Comes back. All right? The beautiful flow. Inside is doing this. My stomach was just gurgling away. I was really happy because I've, I've let go of holding this tight and I just let it relax and there's some space in there. And then we have what happens in your shoulder seams and in your hip seams, which is feeding your brain all kinds of fabulous information about how you're moving in space and about how you're feeling. And then you have this wonderful length that comes through the arms, which is working all of the energy lines that pass through the arms. So those would be lung, large intestine, your circulation, triple warmer, your burners, um, heart, and small intestine. All of those lines come through the arms, and you are expanding them, contracting them, expanding them, contracting them. You're opening underneath the arm, which is lying anything that might be congested there because you hold your arms in close while you're doing other things. All of that is expanding and allowing for a flow to come through the armpit, comes down into the core of the body. Okay, so let's put that whole little sequence together. I'm just going to turn myself. I faced you this way the first time. I'm going to turn, quarter turn, because hopefully that helps you with what the movement looks like. So you're looking at my front. Hand smooth comes up. into the left and turn that right foot. It's going to come through spine. Hold the ball. Step with your left foot towards the corner. Left grasp this tail. Turn the hand. Hold the ball. Step. This is going to go into the wrist. Push from the front foot to the back foot. Palms are going to go together. Open the hands. And then two hands are going to go out. And we actually do come back for the next move. So you have that massage in your foot one more time. Okay? So I get you that angle. So if I turn it one more time, hopefully that will help. So I'll do my commencement facing the back. Commencement. Turn the right foot, spiral that left heel, hold the ball, step, left grasp this tail, hold the ball, step, fingertip into the wrist, bow and arrow back, palm to palm, open the hands. Two hands are out, sink, and then we would carry on. Okay, that gives you a different angle. As you're watching, if you find an angle that works a little bit better for you, that's wonderful. Try to follow my voice and get away from trying to use your head to follow me, because again, you want to know what does it feel like on the inside, okay? So I'm going to do it one more time, back to, I'll face the front here, but then I'll be facing to the side. So there's the commencement. And I just follow my voice and see if you can do this without looking at me. Turn your right foot, let your left heel spiral around so your foot can turn. Hold the ball, left hand going underneath, place the left foot to the corner. 
Left breast can steal, left hand is coming out to the front. Hold the ball with the right hand underneath, step the right foot, and this is going to go into the wrist. Slowly nail back. Palm to palm. Open the hands. Two hands go out. And sink. Okay. So to finish off, you bring your hands here in front. We talked about this last week. Arms are at 40, 45, 90 degree angle. Okay, and about an orange width away from the body. And you're turning the hands one side to the other side, sinking down into your feet. Hopefully you notice that the balance or the weight within the feet is now balanced. You can feel all the toes. And this is nice and relaxed. If you worked on this during the week, you may notice that this feels um, not quite as stressful to try to learn it and uh, have the ability to calm a little bit. Okay, and then you can take the hands down. You can probably feel the energy flowing out those fingertips. And we're just going to rotate right from the shoulder all the way through. may decide you want to bring that back up and then you can just turn from the top again. Fabulous. Okay, let's just do a little bit with the feet. Um, something that I mentioned to someone who was traveling the other day, they were saying how hard it was to get in and out of the car after they've been sitting in the car for a while. And I just wanted to remind you, man, if you're the driver, you're going to be put on the gas pedal, so this doesn't work there. But if you're a passenger, sitting in the car, try to sit up so you're on your sit bones and everything is traveling up. And the next part is you're just going to tap your toe. Put on some good music, let the toe tap, and you have a pump in your heel, and it's sending blood and lymph back up to the core of the body. And just by tapping your toe, you can change the way the body's going to feel when you get out of the car. And the other thing you can do, you know, tap the toe, but you can also sit in the car with the spine lifted and open, and you can turn the head. And that is going to change the flow of energy in your legs, all the way up your spine, and into your arms. Sounds like whole body, doesn't it? So, that was something that I shared with someone who does a lot of driving and finds it very difficult when they have to sit a lot. And you could use the same if you were at your desk, spending a lot of time sitting there. And you'll notice that I do sit up away from the back of my chair, so I'm not going to lean back. I'm always sitting up. My feet are planted on the floor. I have the weight equal into both feet. And that is my lesson for me on how to make sure I'm always energetically supported while I'm sit, uh, sitting down doing things to make sure my energy can stay nice and strong. Okay, that gives you some tips and tools for your next week. I hope you enjoy following along. I did in the first part of the broadcast today, um, put all of the details about the playlists on YouTube. You can look up Michelle Greenwell or Tai Chi Wellness, but you'll see there's three Tai Chi playlists there. You're very welcome. Go explore the playlists, start your practicing, figure out what works for you, um, and just do some diving in. And it can be five minutes, 10 minutes, Maybe you've got 30 minutes. Whatever you have, go look up a video. Learn a little something and then see if you can incorporate that into your everyday. Okay, have a wonderful weekend. Take care.